Hi, and this is Dr. Julie Gilbert from Oregon Weight and Wellness. And uh, I'd like to say hello to everyone today. Thanks for joining us. I think we're having a little technical difficulty, but uh, we'll do our best to get through it. Uh, let's see. I have invited Rachel to join us and hopefully she is able to, but if not, uh, we are reading through Michael Pollan's food rules. Oh, hi, Rachel. Welcome. Hello. Welcome. Yeah. I think we're getting through our technical difficulties. I'm a little crooked here today, but that's okay. Uh, and I was sharing with our audience, we are reading through Michael Pollan's food rules. Yes. And uh, we're on chapter 13 today. So um, I love this. It, it, yeah. It says eat only foods that will eventually rot. <laughs> I think that's funny. Eat only foods that will eventually rot. And um, uh, I am working with um, a new medical student today, Alicia. She's going to join us in a couple of weeks. Very excited. And uh, she's already contributed. Exciting. She says, preserve your health not your food, right? I love you want it. to preserve your health. Yeah, isn't that great? Preserve your health, not your food, because we want to avoid foods with preservatives. We want to eat foods that rot, right? Yes. So, um, Rachel, I was thinking, go ahead. Well, no, go ahead. I think my service is kind of slow, so you'll have to tell me if I'm, can you hear me? And am I, am I, uh, am, is my audio okay? The audio is great. We're just a okay. little delayed. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What were you going to ask okay. me? So, uh, yeah, I was going to ask you. Uh, I know. So I was going to ask you uh, several times I have gone to my refrigerator and unfortunately the foods are rotting in there. So I'm wondering what's the best way, you know, cause sometimes I, you know, when we buy uh, fresh produce at the grocery store, we put it in that plastic bag and then it gets weighed and then the bag goes in the refrigerator. And sometimes, uh, I don't know, a week or so later I go bigger out the bag and then it's soup, right? It's this <laughs> primordial soup in the refrigerator. So yeah, yes, we want to eat foods that rot, but maybe, maybe, me have some tips for us about how not to let it turn into the primordial soup. <laughs> well, so this is a great question and I apologize if I'm delayed, but maybe hang with me. It's probably got a little bit of a funny delay, but uh, I think this is a great question and I think it takes a little bit of research. Um, I'm still trying to figure out what's the, what, you know, because there is a good science behind certain fruits and vegetables that should be together in the drawer in your refrigerator and certain fruits and vegetables should not live together in the drawer, right? Um, and then there's even, and I don't know the answer that I think you can look online. Um, I'm still trying to teach myself which foods give off a certain hormone or a certain pheromone or a certain chemical or whatever yeah. it is. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. That causes them to speed up the rotting process. Um, I know that there are some special produce bags you can buy, like maybe online um, or maybe in some stores that keep certain produce longer. Um, mm. For me, I'm really careful about the temperature of my drawers, my produce mm. drawers. If it's too cold, my carrots will freeze, my spinach will freeze, my onions will freeze, you know, so you have to be really careful about where you place things. Um, but that's another reason why canned items come in handy. They're not typically preserved like what we're talking about with chemicals. Um, and if you get the low sodium, then at least you, because you, you need to have two things on hand fresh produce and things that can kind of, you know, go with it together. So if you have a few things that are canned or frozen, frozen veggies, if your bag is all soupy, now you can go with your frozen veg. <laughs> right. Right. Awesome. Yeah. I'm thinking, uh, my mom always told me not to put onions together with potatoes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because, um, yeah, they, I think the onions off gas and then that rots the potato. Interesting. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. So yeah, great suggestion about figuring out what combines. And the other thing I was thinking of, maybe if I had in mind, or if I, I did the chopping ahead of time, if I didn't just take it out of the bag and shove it in the fridge and mm-hmm. then forget about it. Mm-hmm. If I had a plan for it, yep. that's going to help me. Oh yeah. Okay. So I've got um, my mushrooms in here and I had a plan to do this great stir fry one day. So if planning ahead, if I meal plan, then I can meal prep. Yeah. And then I can make super fridge, you know, yes. right? right. The super fridge. I'm way more likely even to just add veggies to my plate of whatever I'm eating even if it wasn't part of a normal food prep or plan, Mm -hmm. I'm way more likely to eat it in any given day. If I open my fridge and I see my containers that are clear and see-through and I see, oh yeah, I prepped and pre-chopped my bell peppers, my carrots, my my zucchini, my right, whatever, Mm -hmm. it's ready to go. And it's, and even onions, you guys, if you, if you pre-chop a bunch of onion and just have it in a container, you're way more likely to grab a big handful of it and toss it into something that you're sauteing, um, Um, or add it to a salad, um, or just eat it as, you know, a side thing on a plate of whatever you're eating to add more fruits and vegetables to your plate. So I love that super fridge idea. What, where's that an idea from? Yeah, right. Well, that's one from one of the classes that we teach, uh, the tiny habits class uh, by BJ Fogg. Yeah, he mm-hmm. brings up super fridge in the book, which is awesome. I love that concept. Yeah, it's a great concept. And, you know, um, sometimes we, we get a little afraid of the word food prep or food mm-hmm. planning. It seems big and overwhelming. It seems like something you have to waste your whole Saturday or Sunday doing, and it feels bigger than it needs to be. Um, but but just a little bit of thought ahead of time, a little bit of planning ahead of time. If you can, if you like to grocery shop and prep all in the same day, plan that out, build it into your day, and don't let those veggies go into your refrigerator in the state that they came home with you from the grocery store, right? So they come home and then to be washed and prepped before they get to go live in the fridge. That's kind of like a, a, a kind of a rule I have for myself. Okay, mm-hmm. I've got to do something with this to prepare it, to start the preparation, mm-hmm. to be able to have it easily mm-hmm. ready to go and eat this yeah. week. Right. Um, yeah, so kind of that. Um, or for some people, they really like to grocery shop on a separate day, get that out of the way. And then they have their prep and planning Mm-hmm. kind of on a different day where they pull all the food out, lay it out, and then they start to kind of put it together. So mm-hmm. you got to find what works for you. But you, the only way you'll know is if you try and start. Exactly. Right. Try and start mm-hmm. somewhere. Right. Yeah. And uh, I really like what you said, Rachel, about um, it feeling over, you know, sometimes it feels overwhelming, mm-hmm. but, but, but we can build it into our schedule. And sometimes we get so busy, which kind of begs the question, why do we let ourselves get so busy? And uh, or why isn't food prep and planning more of a priority? Or why? And how can I give myself permission to put that into my daily or weekly routine? So um, questions that, you know, have different answer, answers for different people. Yeah. And, uh, and we just want to move in a forward direction. So, mm-hmm. so what, uh, so I was thinking about when I was reading this chapter about the Twinkie that, uh, mm-hmm. has sat around for, I don't know how many, what length of time, a long time. Decades. Yes. Stay in the package with all the chemicals in it, keeping mm-hmm. it, it's beautiful, pretty self. <laughs> But yeah, they can stay a long time. They do not rot. No, there's actually one on display at a museum. I don't remember which museum it is, but it's literally in like a glass case. And it's like this Twinkie was purchased in, you know, 1960 or whatever. And it still looks like a perfect Twinkie. (laughs) That's nothing has changed. Now, uh, the other thing that I think of... um, you know, some fast food, sometimes you might have, you don't use this, but, you know, a, a long time ago, 10 years ago, 
my kids, occasionally we would go through fast food and their kids being kids, they'd leave whatever in the car. And then I'd come back, maybe start to smell something, maybe a week or two, maybe a month later. It wasn't rotting though. <laughs> it was, no. It was this, in that same form. <laughs> yes, yes. We did an experiment, one of my kids' science projects. I think it was my daughter's science project. We we took a homemade burger and a McDonald's burger and laid them out on the counter to see what would happen and to see if which one rotted and you know what happened to it and and the fries and everything. And it was it was interesting, you know, some things shrank a little bit and kind of dried out with the with the fast food meal, but it didn't rot. Like there was so there's probably so much salt. And whatever else is that they're adding to the food, um, right. you know, you think you're eating a burger. I don't know that it's actually straight beef. <laughs> I'm, I, I like to believe that they're giving you beef, but I, I don't think it is straight beef. I think there's a lot of other stuff in it, but it just wouldn't rot. The, um, right. the flies didn't really come to it. It was really kind of like preserved. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay. That's great. Okay. So. Uh, on that note, what yeah. things in Super Fridge are you putting together for your dinner tonight? What's for dinner for you, Rachel? Let's see. Um, super. Well, I don't. I don't. I don't currently have a super super fridge. We we were away all weekend, so I don't have a super fridge. I need to start making my super fridge today. Um, so that in mind, it will probably be. Um, it will probably be tapping into our frozen, our freezer, right? So we, we do a lot of food prepping and I'm always making more and putting leftovers in the freezer so that I have four times like this when we come back on a Monday, we were gone all weekend and we didn't food prep. But I know I have things that are there ready to support me. I know I've got tons of different frozen vegetables, tons of different frozen pre-made soups and um, just different things that I've made. So I'll probably go grocery shopping in my freezer today mm -hmm. and that's going to be dinner, but I don't know what it is yet. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Mm -hmm. How about and, you? Yeah. So this weekend I did a different kind of preserving. I did the old fashioned mm -hmm. preserving. Yeah. I got oh, together yeah. with my 90 year old neighbor who is an expert canner and I had a friend who brought over 150 pounds of tomatoes. And uh, my my neighbor went through that and she made short work of it. She went, I mean, it was two days, 150 pounds of tomatoes. So we um, extracted juice from the tomatoes and we made a puree which with um, celery, onion, mm. um, garlic. We used cilantro. And then we made, and then we canned all that. And so I am going to make something from my freshly. And so I'll have that preserved. We didn't put any salt in this, by the way, but wow. we canned it. And I'm going to have mm -hmm. that for my winter, which is awesome. But yes. um, yeah, but I'm going to take some of the fruits of that labor and make a meal out of that tonight. So we'll probably, uh, my husband, he said he wanted um, sloppy joes. So we're not going to do can, we're not going to do sloppy joes from a can. No. But, but we're going to make, use this beautifully newly preserved tomato from my friend's garden with all this great, uh, the other wonderful vegetables in there. And we'll use our grass fed beef and then I'll throw more onion and bell pepper and um, I'll make this Yum. uh, um, yummy uh, and we'll put it out over a whole grain bread and, or mm -hmm. even maybe a, even a potato, maybe. Um, I haven't figured the rest out that we're, he's leaving. So I'm trying to empty my fridge. So whatever's in my fridge is mm -hmm. going to go into yeah. this meal. <laughs> yeah. I like yeah. that. I like so. that um, sloppy Joe on yeah. a potato that kind of reimagines the old sloppy uh -huh. Joe and adds nutritional value and fiber and kind of makes it more interesting. And you're not just going with a refined, even though it would be whole wheat bread, that's still more processed than a potato. Mm -hmm. So that's a nice shift. Mm -hmm. Love that idea. Never yeah. thought of that. I like that. I'm, I'm tucking that one away. Yeah. All right. Awesome. All right. Well, thanks for joining us, Rachel. And thank you for joining us. Remember, you can give us a call at Oregon Weight and Wellness and 971-273-7143. Uh, 
um, we would be happy to um, come alongside you on your journey toward health. So remember, preserve your health, not your food. Okay, thanks. Bye, everyone.